Hunter x Hunter has returned with a series of brand new manga chapters after being on hiatus for 1,423 days. That's almost four years without a chapter. But after many fans had already given up on ever seeing the continuation of this fantastic and unique story, Hisoka and Co. finally are having their big comeback. However, you might not be aware of the bittersweet story behind the long hiatus. How close Hunter x Hunter actually came to being done for good and how in the end Yoshihiro Togashi overcame the massive odds stacked against him and his story to actually make it to publication one more time. It's a story of pain, sickness, the curse of being a genius writer and of a man who has dedicated his everything to his work and his fans. And while it's already clear that this new material is seamlessly picking up with the high quality he left off on, after such a long time it's easy to lose track of what's actually going on right now in the story what characters are important and what you can expect of the upcoming chapters and the overall future of the story. So this is everything you need to know about the long-awaited return of Hansa Hansa. There aren't really too many stories that can allow themselves to suddenly go on an unannounced and open-ended hiatus and then come back four years later to an euphoric fan base that is more excited and hungry for new stories than maybe ever before. That alone should already give you a taste of just how special Hansa Hansa truly is as a story. After years of complete silence since its last chapter in Weekly Shonen Jump magazine on November 26, 2018, with no one knowing what the status of the story really was and why there had been no news for such a long time, author Yoshihiro Togashi finally appeared out of nowhere on a brand new Twitter profile on May 24th, 2022, with the following tweet. Four more chapters left for now. Togashi must have expected all kinds of reactions to this tweet. Maybe no one would notice it. Maybe people would be angry with him for practically ghosting his entire fanbase for four years, or even worse. Maybe people had just stopped caring for his story altogether and moved on. Instead, what happened next is something that neither he nor anyone else probably could have ever imagined. The entire internet exploded. And I really mean that. I've never seen anything like it happen before. The most unlikely assortment of people you could ever imagine came together under this tweet to celebrate the corner of a manga page with a little sketch that looked like someone had just played around with his pen and forgotten to put the cap back on. From massive YouTubers like Mr. Beast to the most random assortment of brands like KFC or Axe Body Spray, everyone was excited excited seemingly about the prospect of this man's scribbles. Togashi's Twitter account blasted itself to 2 million followers in a few days and now stands at 3 million only a few months after its launch, where he has been publishing updates on his progress. That must have been a massive relief and probably somewhat overwhelming to him to see all these positive responses he got. But what to an outsider must have looked like millions of people going absolutely nuts about a few doodles on badly lit paper has a very easy explanation. Hansa Hansa is a one of a kind story, even in the world of shonen that at the peak level pretty much consists of nothing but high quality stories. The secret recipe? Well, Togashi took a close look at mainstream shonen and decided to flip it completely on its head as a concept, pioneering a whole subgenre of successful series like Attack on Titan, Jujutsu Kaisen, or Chainsaw Man. He basically looked at the established format of major stories like Dragon Ball, One Piece, and Naruto, and wondered what would happen if he treated these stories realistically. The result is that Hunter x Hunter starts out pretty much like a normal shonen, but its main character, Gon Freaks, goes from cheer fearfully powerful good boy to one of the darkest and most disillusioned characters in modern fiction. The entire story very quickly becomes very dark and very morally complex. Turns out that a 13 year old boy who thinks there are only good and bad people will have a hard time in the real world that's filled with morally ambiguous characters. The story in its world feel incredibly real and refreshing as the intricate politics and challenges of the world shape its heroes and not the other way around. Togashi's character writing is some of the best, if not the best, in all of manga, each character with incredible depth and moral complexity. Garnish this with a fantastic power system like Nen, and you have a story that is beloved by millions of people. And yet we almost never got this continuation of Hunter x Hunter in the 
first place. Yoshihiro Togashi began his work on Hunter x Hunter on March 16th, 1998, and has produced 36 volumes with 390s chapters in it. Which sounds like a lot until you compare it with a story like One Piece that released just one year prior and has published over 1,000 chapters until today, almost three times as many. The reason for this has been the increasing amount of weeks that Togashi took off from publishing the story. When you look at the Hunter x Hunter hiatus chart, which, yes, is a real thing, then you can see how the manga starts out with a lot of blue weeks, where the manga was actually published, continually growing redder and redder until around 2006, where it switches into long streaks of red and blue kind of alternating, where the story would go on a break for a while and then publish around 10 chapters in a row. And then these stretches of red that it takes to produce a handful of chapters get longer and longer until 2018, where we finally hit that big red wall that is the four year hiatus we're just coming out of right now. What in the world is going on here? Well, it turns out that Yoshihiro Togashi, despite being incredibly passionate and caring about his work as a mangaka, has been fighting with terrible health problems ever since starting the story that have made it almost impossible for him to continue his work. These problems included increasingly excruciating back and chest pain that made it very hard for him to move and draw. On top of that, he then also started to sleep poorly, which soon turned into full-blown insomnia, in parts of course due to his chronic pain that kept his body from getting the necessary rest it really needed to heal. As a result, he ultimately became bedridden and pretty much incapable of working on his story for weeks and sometimes months on end. Togashi eventually decided to share this terrible and exhausting cycle with his fans in a series of author notes appearing alongside a few chapters that he still managed to release at the time. Now we don't really know for sure, but it's very likely that his four year absence also was caused by his declining health as he tried to focus on recovery. Some people speculated during that time that maybe it wasn't his health after all, maybe Togashi had simply written himself into a corner with the story and was just kind of looking to get out of that. After writing a pretty much perfect ending to the adventures of Gon and Kilua, he shifted his focus to setting out the Dark Continent, a place that has been hyped up with such high expectations that some would argue it was impossible to properly deliver on. And while I personally think that that definitely was part of his struggle at that time, Togashi has proven often enough just how capable of a writer he truly is that wouldn't shy away from that type of challenge, I think. And indeed, with his return to the public world through Twitter and sharing his progress on the recent chapters, fans were very optimistic, not only that they would finally get to see the Dark Continent, but also that his condition must have been somewhat improving, some even going so far as speculating that a continuous weekly release would be possible again from now on. However, this couldn't have been any further from the truth. In July, Togashi admitted that he was even unable to sit upright and that he was now drawing the line art for his remaining chapters while lying down. Then, until August, his health once again seemed to steadily decline, tweeting that he had only finished a single panel, not having enough strength to keep even the grip on his pen. In that moment, the entire project seemed to be at risk of ending right then and there. However, at that point also something changed. Whether it was his own will to keep writing his story and keep his promise to his audience, or it was his overall health slowly improving slightly, or maybe even a mix of both. In the end, Togashi decided to not give up and keep fighting. He worked hard and was determined to finish the 10 chapters for release, which has now finally happened. And which he must have been incredibly proud of. So with that out of the way, what exactly is going on right now in the manga? And where are we going from here? Well, if you only watch the anime or simply need a quick refresher, here's a quick overview of what happened between the chairman selection arc and the new chapters releasing right now. With Gon having no more Nen and Kilua on a wholesome journey with his little sister, the focus of the story has now completely shifted to Kurapika, who is the main character now, as well as Leorio to some degree. Both of them have now joined the Zodiacs, the top 12 hunters, which has started the ninth arc of Hunter Hunter known as the Succession War arc. Now this might sound weird, but right now everything takes place on a giant boat that's shaped like a big black whale that is slowly traveling towards a dark continent, a place that is mostly undiscovered and that is filled with powerful Nen creatures, such as, for example, the Chimera Ant Queen. And on this ship, there is now this battle royale happening between 14 princes of the Kakin Kingdom for who's going to get to be king, each of them having a Nen beast at their disposal for the fight, though the rules really get quite complicated. The Zodiacs of the Hunter Association are on board 
to escort Isaac Netero's son on his expedition to the Dark Continent. Kurapika is there to retrieve the last of his clan's missing Scarlet Eyes from the fourth prince and probably main antagonist of this arc, Teridnish. The Phantom Troop is also there looking for Hisoka, who after a deathmatch with Krolo that he had wanted for a long time, had killed two of the troop members. Plus there is the struggle amongst a number of uh, mafia families, all on that boat. So you tell me if that sounds interesting or not. It seems that for now we'll be getting a minimum of 10 chapters and then we can really only hope that Togashi's health stabilizes so we will see a continuation of the story after that, hopefully with less than four years of waiting. The new material will continue this fantastic journey towards the Dark Continent and will give us the return of some of our most beloved characters like Krolo, Hisoka and Kurapika while also introducing a ton of new fascinating characters on top. If you want to know for example what makes Hisoka such a fantastic character, well you can just watch my analysis of him here next.